Hello everyone. Um, so this is another live session, and this one is about sequences. Um, if you have any questions, as always, use the chat uh, to ask your questions uh, and try to help each other. Um, so let's uh, jump right in. Um, let me go to item pool. So you can all go to usual website let me try to copy um maybe already someone already did it uh, so um let me start accepting the The answers is it yes okay so there is this question what is the next number um, we have a sequence started with zero and the next number is uh, ten the next number is one thousand and one hundred and ten and I'm looking for the well, I, I'm asking you to guess what the next number will be in this sequence of numbers. Okay, um, this is of course uh, just to warm up. There is no real, uh, there is no actual actual solution because I'm just giving you three numbers. Uh, the rule, uh, you know, to come up with the fourth number could be could be anything really. Um, I have something in mind. I hope you can guess it. I, I see that there are like. 12 people who put 14 people already uh, putting in the same um, number, which is reassuring. They might have already seen this um, sequence before or like a version of it. I can give you a very strong hint. Um, it's called the, the look and say sequence. That might that might help you with the uh, guessing the next number so this is actually a sequence that was uh, i think invented or definitely made popular by john conway um, the mathematician who sadly passed away earlier this year. Um, 
and this is a very uh, this is a fun sequence I think a good sequence to start with so I still see a few um, yes a few submissions coming in but I might uh, just finish and um, finish this all and, and reveal the answer if you don't mind uh, let me go to item pool let's see the finish and reveal so the next number well according to my rule uh, was uh, 3110 and actually that wasn't the the majority uh, that wasn't the, the winning uh, well that was the winning answer but that wasn't wasn't the answer most people inputted so what was it so, uh, so there's like five ones followed by a zero that's that's the most common answer um, by you um, I'm not sure so what what might have been the, so th there could be zero ones then one one three ones and five ones I guess that that was the kind of the guess of the of, of those uh, 27 people who, who guessed five ones followed by a zero that the number of ones increases by some some sort of rule um, so the actual um, the actual um, rule uh, to for this for this sequence is the following so it starts with starts with zero and I said and I told you that it's called the look and say uh, sequence well you look at this number and say what it is it is just one zero so you write down one zero and for the next number you look at this one and say what it is well th there is one one and one zero okay and this is how you create uh, each term in the sequence you look at the previous one and say what you see I see three ones and one zero this is a, a silly sequence and um, but it, but a very fun one uh, there are all sorts of uh, properties of this sequence that are very interesting um, I hope uh, um, you all uh, got the got the general rule there and you could probably follow um, the sequence and and come up with the with the with the terms uh, that come after this fourth one um okay let's uh, move on to the next uh, question unless you have any questions um so feel free to ask um, any questions related to these uh, things then my next uh, next question or rather uh, instruction for you is to select uh, the sequence defined by the formula a n equals n over n plus one while n is um, running through the set of natural numbers so the elements of the set of natural numbers so the general term in the sequence is uh, in this case given by an explicit formula which is very nice it's good because all you have to do is just plug in the natural numbers and remember for us the natural the set of natural numbers starts with one then two then three zero is excluded from the set for us so all you have to do is just plug in uh, the first few natural numbers and select um, the sequence that you get out of this uh, this um, general formula this explicit formula so let me just read you the options you there's the sequence that uh, has terms zero, one half, two thirds, three fourths, and so on. Well, the so on is usually something that you should be able to guess at that point when I'll uh, put these ellipses um, and don't continue the, the sequence. So the next uh, option is uh, half, two thirds, three fourths, uh, four fifths, and so on. Um, the third option is one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, and so on. And the, the last option uh, that you can choose is, is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and so on. Okay, so this is how you read these three dots to say and so on, or, or um, something along those lines that indicates that these, this pattern keeps um, continuing. Okay, so I see a, 
see a big majority of people voting for the same thing, which is reassuring. Um, so I guess this is even easier. Uh, this this problem is even easier than the, the previous question was. Um, and I might as well just finish um, this poll because I see most of you got it right. I'm guessing that, well, let's see, but I'm guessing that even uh, those people who, yes, who got it wrong, those uh, nine people uh, who, who, cho who chose the first option, they might uh, got tricked by the, the set of natural numbers not including zero in by, by our convention. Um, and whoever choose, chose C uh, might have been, yeah, um, you know, tricked by, um, but maybe didn't notice the, the N in the numerator or something like that. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, let's move on. Um, we are uh, making good progress here. So this is going to be a bit more tricky. Now I'm giving you a general formula, a, an explicit formula, just like before. Um, and I'm asking, so I'm giving you the sequence by uh, giving you the general formula for the nth term. So a n is equal to n plus the cosine of n times pi plus one, all of this divided by n. And we are um, taking n to be natural numbers. So I'm asking you um, to give me the, the 100th term in the sequence, okay? So we'll start with n equals one, and we go n, equal, n equals two, three, and all the way to 100. I'm asking about the 100th uh, term in the sequence, okay? Um, I guess the, the reason it's tricky is because of this uh, cosine term. Uh, all you have to remember is now we are taking the cosine of a multiple of multiples of pi, uh, integer multiples of pi, and depending on that integer that multiplies pi, the cosine can be one of two values actually. So only two values uh, would appear in the numerator for that cosine term. Uh, and I'm guessing again this um, this split between the first um, two uh, most common answers uh, shall be yeah just people um, calculating that the wrong maybe there is a sign um, error or something like that. Um, that could also happen. Thanks, Adam, for um, reminding me. They could, uh, could be inputting the answer in, in different ways. Um, if I remember correctly, I set this question up so it should accept equivalent um, forms of the same answer. So let, I'm, just say, I'm just giving you an example. Whether they say it's... Uh, one half or or 0 0.5 they the the system would accept both uh, answers so but yes uh, in case i forgot to do that uh, i guess then then it would um both of these uh, popular answers would would win Um, so what is this about? Um, you get the same answer to two decimal places using degrees or radians. Uh, yes, I guess that's true. As long as you convert five radians into 180 degrees. And yeah, but I hope no one uses their calculator because this is just, uh, yeah, this is way too simple for that um way too easy for for us grabbing uh, reaching for our calculators that's a general advice uh don't trust your calculator you might be setting it up wrong for example by forgetting that it is in degrees not radians or some or, or vice versa so anyways um I, I see a good number of um 
submissions. So I'm I will finish um, this poll and uh, reveal the answer. Let's see. Okay. Ah, okay. So in fact, uh, Adam was wrong. Adam was uh, was right in saying that um, they, these people might be all of them might might be inputting the right answer, but in different forms. So that's good. I mean, as 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 you can see, um, the system accepts all of these correct answers, uh, but it distinguishes um, in the way you uh, inputted um, your answer. So that's that's great. So I, I'm happy to to see so many good um, answers, um, correct answers. Let me just quickly uh, show you what we what we had to uh, figure out. But of course, you all did. So what was it? It was n plus cosine of n times pi plus one over n. I think so. If you take n to be 100, well, first of all, before I do that, all you have had to remember is that n is an integer. That the cosine will be either plus one or minus one. Okay. So if you remember the the cosine function, the plot of the cosine function, just quickly, starts out zero. It starts one. And then it dips to negative one at pi, and then uh, goes back to one at two pi. And this is what it keeps uh, doing. Okay, so uh, even multiples of pi will uh, give you. So this is just a cosine function. Will give you plus one, and odd multiples of pi. Uh, if you take the cosine of those, will give you minus one. Okay, so this is a different way of writing the same thing. Uh, it's minus one to the power n because if n is an even um, number, we'll get plus one, and if n is an odd um, number, we'll get minus one. Okay, so now if I take n to be 100, that's an even number. So the cosine of 100 pi will be plus one. So a 100 will be well n. So that is 100 in this case plus one because of the cosine term uh, right there, and plus one divided by 100. So that's 102 divided by 100. Okay. And you could, of course, uh, simplify uh, this fraction by two. So to get uh, 51 over 50, or you could have uh, given it in decimal uh, expression expansion, which some people also did, uh, as I seem to remember. Um, yes. OK. So I hope this was clear. Um, let's move on. OK, so this one is going to be I'm guessing a bit uh, harder or a bit more difficult. Um, so, how many where how many ways are there to climb this flight of stairs in steps of one or two? Well, you can see this these stairs. There are five steps, and um, the way you have to interpret this um, this question in steps of one or two, meaning that you can take a step, or you can uh, make two steps at once. So step from from um, yeah, level <laughs> level um, sort of from this from the ground up to the second step right away. So and you can choose uh, the order of these steps in in any way. The point is that you have to end up um, on the top of the of the staircase. You start from the bottom, and again uh, you can decide randomly to to do just one step or two step or alternate or whatever. I want you to count all the possible ways of climbing the staircase. If you are only allowed to uh, step uh, one step at a time or, or just skip a step and take, uh, go up two uh, steps. OK, so it's just uh, it's a bit of combinatorics. You have to 
count uh, value. You could, for example, count um, the number of all the possible ways um, of doing this. Um, and I already see a good uh, number of submissions, and they are really well. They, there is a good spread. I mean, I'm happy to see that because uh, all you have to do is just input. There is a box, and all you have to do is just input a a um, an integer there. So, so there is that. There is that. Uh, I, do this. Oh, I always mess this up. I won't. I won't even try. So there is that box uh, below the question, and you can uh, try to enter the the number of ways uh, you can climb five steps in steps of one or two. Okay, so there are many different answers, which is well, uh, submissions, which is interesting. Uh, I'll be I'll be interested to see the results, um, but I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a few more minutes. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, just you know, uh, switch off your speaker or mute me if you want uh, to focus on the question. Um, but I'll tell you that basically what we are doing is we want to take five steps in steps of one or two. Which is the same thing as basically um, getting the, the number, the result five, by adding ones or twos, right? Because you are just adding up your steps one in, in one step or two steps at a time. So it's just how many ways, the real question is just how many ways there are to write five as a sum of ones and or twos using only the number one um, and the number two. So this is really what, what's happening. And again, just like I told you previously, um, there is a, a brute force way, a hard way of solving this problem, which is just counting up all the ways there are. Um, but you might be able to do that with five, step, five steps. Imagine doing this with 500 steps. Um, I don't think you would want to do that, even if you have uh, some time on your hands. Um, but there is also a clever way, a quick um, way of arriving at the answer without even uh, thinking too hard. And I'll. And I'll um, probably show you both of these uh, solutions because it's easy for this uh, question to, to show you both of them. Okay, so I mean, I see a pretty good number of um, submissions. Um, does anyone need any more time? Uh, could you just, uh, if, if you feel like you, you are close to uh, the answer, getting the answer, um, just, just type in the chat that uh, I need more time or something. Um, but this is not really worth spending too much time on. Uh, there will be more important questions later on. Um, Okay, I don't see any anyone um, asking for more time. So I might as well uh, finish the poll if that's okay, and give you the, the answer. So let's see. Um, so the correct answer was eight. There are eight different ways of climbing up this uh, staircase using steps of one or two. Okay. Some people have put in uh, uh, 10 um, ways, seven, five. Some some people have went way over the, the correct answer, some 120, but there were three of them, uh, interestingly. So they might have uh, went through the same uh, thought process. 
which I would be interested in hearing. Unfortunately, I can't. Um, yeah, you, you, you could um, tell me in the chat how you arrived at 100 and uh, yeah, five factorial. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Well, I mean that. I mean that's not the correct answer, but um, it, uh, now I, I think I understand. Yes, that they just really tried something that uh, they remembered from combinatorics. Uh, um, taking five steps, it's uh, five factorial. Um, but that's not how it goes. I see uh, 1024. I guess that was two to the power n or something similar. Anyways, let me um, show you the solution. So so let me uh, just recreate this, um, this beautiful staircase. Um, it's one, two, three, four, and five like that and basically you start from here and you could you step one step at a time and that's one way right so the way i i uh, reformulated this problem for you is just adding up ones and twos to get five so that's one way to get five right that would be another way of uh getting five well maybe three ones and a two and of course uh if you do it in a way that uh, the two um, steps at, at, that you take at all uh, at once uh, is coming earlier. That would be a different uh, way of climbing up the stairs. So let me put the two right there. That's a different way. Then there is yet another way, which includes only one, uh, two. And the last of these uh, would be this one. Last one of these would be this one. And then I could start having uh, one plus two plus two. So two uh, instances of these two uh, steps taken. And then of course, uh, two plus one plus two is also an, a possibility. And uh, two plus two plus one is also a possibility. And these are all the possible ways of doing this because uh, I could use zero uh, twos, so no twos at all, or just one. Uh, two step um, included in this uh, in this climbing up, or two of these two steps uh, in, in included in the climbing up. I couldn't use three of these because then I would uh, go beyond the, the, the top of the staircase. Uh, so these are exactly eight possibilities, and there are no more. Um, so the, this is this is the the brute force way. This is the the not so clever uh, way of uh, counting them up. Um, there is a clever way of counting them up, and that's um, basically just noticing that when you when you want to go to the last uh, step, you could go there from since we are stepping in neither steps of one or two, you could go from step four by just one step. So if you just stop, if you just consider this staircase with four steps, count all, all the possible ways of climbing up to step four in steps of one or two. Um, so let's, uh, let's um, focus on that number. Then the number of ways to go into step five is just this number, the number of ways to go into step four, because there's only uh, one way, uh, one step that you have to take from there, or the number of ways uh, to go up to step three, and then there is only again one way that is not counted in this uh, previous um, counting uh, to go up to step five in a step of two. Okay, so what I'm saying is that uh, climbing up the staircase, the number of um, well, the number of ways to climb up the staircase, let me call it a five. So this is uh, the five um, the staircase with five steps is just the number of ways to climbing up uh, a staircase of uh, four steps 
pass the number of ways of climbing up the staircase of three steps. Okay, so if a n is the number of ways of climbing up a staircase of n steps in steps of one or two, this is uh, the general rule a n is equal to a n minus one plus a n minus two. Okay, so this is something, yes, James already uh, in the chat, this is uh, resembling the Fibonacci sequence. Of course, we have to now um, know what are the first two um, numbers in the sequence. So if I have only one step, so I'm considering A1, there's only one way of climbing up that uh, staircase. And similar, well, similarly, if I have uh, two steps, let me do it over here. So one and two, and if I'm climbing in steps of one or two, I could do this. So that's uh, two steps of one or one step of two. Okay, so A2 for that reason is two. Okay, so A1 is one, A2 is two, and then I can use this recursive formula. So this is a recursive uh, sequence, the recursive way of uh, specifying the sequence. I'm, I'm, um, I'm giving you the nth term of the sequence in terms of previous uh, um, entries, previous numbers in the sequence. Okay, so let's go on. So we know that A1 is 1, A2 is 2, so A3 must be the sum of these previous two numbers, so that's 3. A4 is the sum of the previous two numbers, that's 2 and 3, so that's 5. And finally A5, the number we were interested in, is the sum of the previous two numbers, so that's uh, 3 plus 5, so that is 8. Okay, so that was the, uh, I would say, the, the uh, more clever way of um, finding this, this number. Well, again, you might say that, okay, it was actually faster to count up all the possible ways of climbing up the stairs uh, with five steps, but again, think of what would happen if I would give you the problem with not five steps, but 100 steps or 500 steps, you could still use this rule, this recursion, to count all the way to A100 or A500. Okay? Of course, it, it would still take some time to do that, but with this general rule, you don't have to think too much. Uh, all you had to do is to think up this other um, recursion formula. All right? So I hope. Uh, I hope uh, this was clear, so we can move on to the next uh, question. Let's see. Yes. Okay, so this is about uh, properties of sequences. Now we know that we can specify a sequence either by a formula, like an explicit formula, such as the one in this question, um, or by a recursive formula, formula, something that's that is implicitly giving you the nth term of the sequence. So in this example, we have the sequence um, a n equals n squared minus 1 over 10 n, uh, for n being um, natural num numbers. And um, I want you to basically decide whether this sequence is bounded below, bounded above, um, maybe both of these things, in which case you have to uh, choose the third option, which is bounded, or none of these things, so neither bounded below nor above. Okay, so I'm interested in... Um, yes, okay, it seems clear that that you, the, a good number of you, um, um, voted for the same answer. I hope that that, that, that is the correct answer. So you might, when you see a sequence like this, given by an explicit formula, you might as well um, just start and uh, list uh, the first few terms of the sequence by just plugging in n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and see what's, what, what's happening. Okay, so that's just uh, one way of, of, um, of seeing how the sequence behaves. 
Um, and that's always a good uh, start. So, um, in fact, uh, let me let me do that while I I'll wait for more people uh, to submit their answers. So we have this sequence given by an explicit formula. N term in the sequence is n squared minus 1, so 1 less than the nth uh, square number divided by n n. Okay. So um, there is something like um, 70 votes in at the moment. So if yeah, if if you want, you can still go to the the website. Um, itempool.com slash math and 55 slash live and uh, you can still join the um, participating in these in these uh, live polls let me um, while I wait I could what I could do is I could go to my notepad and I could also I could also start uh, listing these numbers so for n equals one we have one squared minus one over n so that's just zero for n equals two we have two squared minus one so that's four minus one three over uh, 20. for n equals three we have three squared that's nine minus 1, that's 8, divided by uh, 30. Okay, so it might be hard to, to see what what's going on, so it's always a good idea to, to have these numbers as, uh, as uh, your, as in, de in decimal expansion, uh, but let me just go on and we'll see what, what happens. So the next square number is uh, 16 minus 1, that's 15, divided by 40. Then we have uh, 25 minus 1, so that's 24, divided by 50. And you will see what happens in the next, uh, for the next number, uh, next square number is 36 minus 1, that's uh, 35, divided by 60. And let me just go on for just a bit longer. So, and then we have 40, um, 9 minus 1, so that's uh, 8 uh, divided by 70. And let me skip uh, to the tenth one, let's say that's 90, uh, that's 100 minus 1, that's 99 divided by 100. So you might be able to see what's going on. We start from a number that is rather small, that, that we start from 0. And by the tenth term, we are almost up to one, the number one. And in fact, the next term, so we have 11 squared, that's 121, minus one, that's 120, divided by 11 10 times 11, so that's uh, 110. So for the 11th term in the sequence, we are already uh, above uh, one. Okay, so if I go back to the poll, uh, we, uh, this 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 was just uh, me trying to give you a hint or a strong hint what what is happening with this sequence. Um, let me uh, finish the poll and reveal the answers. I think, uh, there is enough. There was enough time to, in fact, um, to see that it is a sequence that is bounded below. Okay, so if we go back to um, If we go back to my notepad, you can see that this sequence seems to be increasing. So that's another uh, property that the sequence can have. But we were not asking about uh, its uh, increasing or decreasing behavior. We were more interested in uh, about boundedness. So let me just take uh, this general term n squared minus one. 
divided by n n. So if you look at these numbers, um, well, we could give a lower bound to these to this expression by, by basically just, uh, for example, saying that what if we subtract? How should we do this? Subtract uh, n instead of one. But, well, we'll definitely get a smaller number than number that is less than or equal to the previous one. Okay, because we are uh, taking away more from the numerator, um, so that's giving us a, a smaller fraction. Um, but then we have a common uh, factor of n both in the numerator and in the, in the denominator, so that can be uh, simplified by uh, can be simplified by n, giving us n minus one divided by ten. Okay, so n minus one divided by ten is what is just um, each natural number minus one divided by ten. As as the natural numbers go up, um, n minus one number that is um, one uh, less than that um, is also goes up. So also is, is also going up. So this um, number is in fact um, smaller than our original uh, sequence, but it's just one tenth of the natural numbers that are keep increasing. Okay, so from this, um, from this, uh, you can already see that this is not, it cannot be bounded above. But of course, all of these numbers are uh, non-negative. So there is this lower bound of zero that you have all found. Okay, um, let's go back to, uh, go to the next um, question. Um, I hope that was clear that it cannot be bounded above because it go, goes beyond any upper bound, um, but it is bounded below by zero. So what about this sequence? This sequence um, that is defined um, by um, the nth term being uh, the square root of n plus one divided by n, um, and n goes through the, the set of natural numbers. Um, so is the sequence decreasing, but not strictly decreasing? Or is it maybe strictly decreasing? Could it be increasing, but not strictly increasing? Um, maybe it's strictly increasing, or maybe it's not even monotonic, it's, it, meaning that it's not increasing um, and it's not decreasing. Okay, so just real quick, this is a bit more be a bit more tricky. Um, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so um, let me just uh, tell you that uh, decreasing means that uh, each term in the sequence is less than or equal to the previous one. Um, it's strictly decreasing. It's if it's uh, if there's a strict inequality, meaning that it's always each term in the sequence is getting uh, less and less than the previous one. And uh, it's increasing or strictly increasing if um, the inequality is flipped, meaning that each term is getting uh, larger and larger um, than the previous one. Okay, so there's a good number of submissions, uh, 43, 4 at the moment, which is good. So I hope you could all um, get an idea, a feel for this sequence. Again, what you could do is you could just simply uh, write the first few terms. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'll just uh, close the close the the poll in a in a second and um, go from your your answers. So let me just finish the poll because we still have some few questions to get to. So it's strictly decreasing is what you what you said. Um, so what does that mean? Um, so let me 
just uh, go to my notepad. And there is the sequence, the nth term of the sequence. Here is the n plus first term of the sequence. So instead of n, I use n plus 1. And these are both positive numbers. So let me just try to do equivalent um, um, for, um, rearrangements of these, of these expressions, equivalent uh, sort of manipulations to them, and then see which one is uh, bigger. Okay. So what if I square both of these uh, expressions? Well, I get n plus 1 divided by n squared on the left side, and I get n plus 2 divided by n plus 1 squared on the right side. Okay, next, I, I won't mess up any inequality between these two numbers if I just cross multiply and uh, multiply both sides by n plus 1 squared, giving me n plus 1 uh, cubed on the left side, and multiplying both sides by n squared, giving me n plus 2 multiplied by n squared. Okay, so these, whatever relation these uh, numbers have, uh, it goes through all the way to the beginning, so the same relation will hold true. And then I can just simply um, expand these, um, these uh, powers. So this is n cubed plus 3n squared, 3n plus 1 on the left side. And on the right side, I have n cubed plus 2n squared. So you can already see, well, that's n cubed. You can already see that we have n cubed, but we have one less of n squared on the on the right hand of the right side, and then there are even uh, more terms, positive terms added to the left side. So this is in fact the left side is greater, strictly greater than the the right hand side, and that of course is, uh, holds true all the way to the beginning. So you can see that the nth term, of the C n plus first term of the sequence is strictly less than the nth term of the sequence for all natural numbers basically saying what you what you have uh, many of you have voted for is that it's strictly decreasing okay let's move on um, to the next well, maybe not this one let me just skip this uh, question so that we can get to the really interesting part which is um, convergence of uh, sequences so right away um, I'm jumping in uh, the deep end, I'm just asking you to calculate um, the following limit. So what is the limit of this sequence? I'm telling you that there is a limit to it, so it's a convergent sequence, 3n minus 1 divided by 5n plus 2 uh, as n uh, tends to infinity. What is the number that this is going to tend to? Okay, this sequence, what uh, number does it converge to? Okay, and, and again, you can go to the item pool website and uh, use this virtual keyboard that comes up to input your answer uh, in, 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 that, in that box over there. Yes, uh, I can see a, already a few, few submissions, which is good. We have a couple of minutes left, so I still want to would like to show you at least uh, this limit and then uh, one more question, and then I'll let you go. So just think uh, what is going to happen as n uh, is taking the values uh, that are great, bigger and bigger. So when n is 10, then 100, then 1,000, what is going to happen with that sequence? We'll have uh, something upstairs that's uh, three times that big number, minus 1. So that almost makes no difference to 3n, and n is big, uh, subtracting 1. And same, a similar thing happens in the, in the denominator. You take a number, a big number, multiply it by 5, um, and then add 2. Well, if you add 2 to 5,000, you almost don't, that number will always, almost not even change. So going from, uh, relatively speaking, if you you go from 5,000 to 5,000 plus 2, and that's almost uh, nothing. So this is how um, I would like you to sort of develop some sort of intuition uh, to these limits. But of course, the, the intuition can be uh, easily tricked. So this is why we need 
This is why we need a rigorous definition of limits and a rigorous definition of convergence. And um, this is why I need you to be able to use that definition precisely. So you don't get tricked uh, and you always get the right answer. And you can prove that you got the right answer. Okay, so there's already a fair number of uh, uh, submissions. Let me just um, close the poll. Don't worry if you didn't have time to input your answer. Um, I'll just finish the I'll just finish the answer. Yeah, exactly. So um, the first uh, and the second most common of the submissions were both correct. So 0 0.6 or uh, three fifths are both correct. Um, that is the, the limit of the sequence. Now let's get to the real work because it's it's okay that um, it's nice that you could guess the limit. But what I would like you to do now, and I know I'm I'm aware of the fact that we are close to the end, basically ran out of time. But if you have time to stick around for a minute or two, I would like you to consider consider this this question or this this uh, problem. So. We have seen now that the sequence, now let me just begin accepting answers. So we have seen now that the sequence um, 3n minus 1 divided by 5n plus 2 converges to 3 fifths. Now um, I choose a value for this epsilon, which appears in the definition of convergence. So I choose this epsilon number to be positive, but really small. So in this case, it's 0 0.001, so 1 1,000. And what I would like you to do now, if you really agree with, with these, with these, with these um, people who voted for uh, three fifths to be the limit, I would like you to, con to find the smallest index, uh, capital N, such that if you look at the terms in the sequence that come after that uh, index, so um, after capital N, all of these terms, in the sequence a n will be closer to that limit three fifths than one one thousand okay so it's a bit it takes a bit of uh, calculation and i'm going to show you that calculation if i can so let me just so there's the question you can go to the website to, to see the question so what was this um, sequence? So it was 3n minus 1 divided by 5n plus 2. And basically, uh, at this point, what we wanted is uh, to have this number close to 3, uh, 3 over 5. OK, so in fact, uh, if you look at this sequence, you might be able to see that this is an increasing sequence and uh, it, it tends to 3 over 5 uh, from below, meaning that if I take 3 over 5 and subtract this uh, expression from it, I'll get a positive number. But what I wanted you to, to have is that this uh, number, that this difference, that the distance of, of the sequence from its limit, be less than 1 over 1000. So that was my epsilon. That was the epsilon I gave you. Okay. So if you take this inequality now and uh, rearrange it, you will be able to find the inequality for the index that is needed here. So let me just quickly try to do that. So um, how would I how would I do that quickly? Let, let me just rearrange this. A bit so three uh, fifth minus one over one thousand so that's just uh, six hundred uh, minus one over one thousand okay that's the common uh, denominator well it could have been smaller but anyways this is what uh, I ended up with okay so that's 599 divided by 1,000. OK, and now I, all, all I have to do is just rearrange this inequality uh, to get um, 599 
times 5n plus 2 being less than 1000 times 3n minus 1. Okay, now I just expand. Well, this is almost 600, so that's almost 3000, but it's of course uh, 5 less than that. This is almost uh, 1200, but it's 2 less than that, so 1198. Here we have uh, 3000 ns minus 1000. Okay, so now I just rearrange this. Uh, I will get 5n on the on the right hand side, and I will get 198 on the on the left hand side. I divide by five both sides, so I get 198 divided by five. So that's uh, what is it? That's uh, third. Uh, what is four? Uh, Thirty. Oh, I did. Sorry, I did some sort of mistake. I should have added. Um, I should have added, yes, a uh, thousand. So dividing that is as four hundred and thirty nine point uh, six, I guess. Okay, yes. So that is that is the number that n has to be greater than if we want this uh, this uh, distance from the limit to be less than epsilon for the for the epsilon that I gave you. Okay, so I hope that at this point uh, at least some people got it uh, right. Okay, yeah, that's that's close enough. So let me just uh, quickly summarize what happened. So it's actually the number yeah, the number. Um, 439, because if we look at this calculation, we've seen that for all numbers, all indices that are greater than 439.6, it will happen. So capital N, that index, for this reason, had to be the smallest uh, index for which we have this inequality is uh, 439. Okay, so if little n is already uh, 440, uh, that's good, but the capital N has to be 439. That's the smallest index for which the inequality holds true. Okay, so if you got 440, that's close enough, um, and that you probably got it, um, you got it all right, just the last step, you didn't think about the, um, this, this, uh, these inequalities being uh, straight. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for your um, um, attention and attendance. You've been all very good. Uh, again, um, I'll see you all next week. Take care, everyone, and um, yeah, keep um, keep uh, solving these problems. So um, the convergence of sequences is, usu is usually considered to be a hard topic, but it doesn't have to be. It's not that difficult as you have seen. I hope uh, you will have a good weekend, and I'll see you next week.